What I wanted to talk about today was the protection from and the removal of gin. Now I use the word gin because this does have a particularly Islamic stance uh, uh, flavour to it. Uh, but in truth it could be any entity, it could be any malevolence that I'm really talking about. And these are really simple procedures to protect yourself from harm and if you believe there are gin, fairly simple measures that may be able to remove them. Anyway, you, I, I hope you enjoy it, whatever. Now this is part of a new section to the magic of Java called the real magic of Java. In this new section, I'm going to focus on real people performing what they believe to be real magic in Java. I'll attempt to explain some of the elements of this Javanese magic, particularly what I describe as the Kajawan elements. However, I need to warn you that inevitably my explanations will be partial. Maybe sometimes some elements of what I say will be incorrect, for which I profusely apologise. But this reflects the oral tradition of magic in Java, the mystery, and at times, I have to admit, subterfuge surrounding the practice of magic in Java. Please accept my apologies, but I do hope you enjoy this new section. Before I get into the sort of substance of what I have to say, you'll come across many people, particularly religious people, who will tell you that if you truly believe uh, that you cannot be affected by this malevolence. And that is probably true. But how many of us don't even have a, a little chink in our beliefs? I think at the heart of what they're saying is um, that really if you believe that gin and malevolence can't hurt you, then it can't. And, and that again is true. But as I say, if you have a little chink in your armour, then they're certainly capable of getting through particularly if somebody is using black magic um, to send them to you. So what I talk, want to talk about is, yes, have belief. And if you do have that courage, if you do have that free will, or that will to prevent the will of others coming to you, then you will be safe. But there are some simple precautions. And the most important of these is salt. If you believe that there is a gin or some malevolence in your home, spread salt around and, and that normally works very well. Um, don't leave it there because of the salt will trap the malevolence. So after a few days, sweep it up and uh, throw it away. I say throw it away, don't simply throw it on your garden because you just moved it to the garden. Put it, in, put it in the rubbish so that it's taken away. If, if you don't live somewhere where that can happen, uh, bag it up and, and throw it into running water. Um, and that, that's one of the best things you can do. You can actually bathe in salt as well, or shower in salt. And, and I very much recommend that as another strategy. Um, you could, when you're bathing, you could add other sort of flowers, dried flowers and herbs. Things like dried jasmine work very well. Um, but the very best of all um, is um, called sidra in Arabic. Um, lot in English and bidang bidara in Bahasa, Indonesia. And this, this works wonderfully. Um, you can buy it as an oil and put it on your body. You can simply bathe in it, which is what I would do. Um, providing it's in reasonably small quantities, 
Um, you can even drink it. And, and indeed, I, I make a jam every day that includes a few leaves of this sidra or down badara in it. Um, and as I say, it, it can work very well. Um, finally, and I, I don't want to dwell on this to any great length, but you can use uh, various jimat, uh, talisman for protection, um, and um, yes, yeah, certainly many of them do work. I think they work rather like how, you know, it's said that if you're religious, if you truly believe, nothing can hurt you. I think actually it's the same thing, and that if you believe these jimat are working, then they will offer you protection. It's a focus of your will. So you're focusing your will that nothing can hurt me. And you're looking towards these items to protect you. And because they're focusing your will, they will offer you protection. Well, now I want to turn to what Muslims believe is the most powerful prayer from our Quran. Both for protection from malevolence, jinn. Uh, but it's also used in Rukia, that's, that's the Islamic uh, exorcism. And it's recited during Rukia to remove jinn. Uh, you, may, you may well hear people doing Rukia reciting many other verses from our Quran. But by far the most important is the Ayat al-Kursi, al-Bakra, or the cow. Now, um, what I would say to you is that the real way um, that I know that malevolence can be removed is through this light that I found and that indeed is how Parcano does it um, so this isn't a substitute for the light if you, can, if you haven't found the light use this uh, but the light is all about love it's all about forgiveness so what I often see um, Ustads or Muslims doing wrong uh, when they're performing a rukia is they do it in a very challenging way to the jinn, um, forcing them to, to convert and forcing them to move away. And in my experience, it, you do things through love. So if you can recite Ayak Kursi with love, then I think it'll, it'll go a very, very long way. Now what I'm about to do is I'm about to repeat Ayat al-Kursi to you, uh, but I'm repeating it in English. And Al-Quran is in Arabic. It should be read in Arabic. Any English translation is simply that, a translation. It's somebody's interpretation. So it's not the real word. So you do really have to do it in Arabic. So my Arabic isn't great, so I've, I've, I've got uh, a recording of that that I'm going to play later. But first of all, let me read you the English translation of Ayat al-Kursi. Allah, there is no God worthy of thy worship except him, the everlasting, all-sustaining. Neither drowsiness nor sleep overtakes him. To him, him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Who could possibly intercede with him without his permission? He fully knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them. And one can grasp any of his knowledge except what he, he wills to reveal. His seat encompasses the heavens and the earth. The uh, per perseveration of both does not tire him, for he is the most high, the greatest. So you can see that the words are simply affirming the power of God. Um, his greatness, that he knows everything, he knows he knows your past, he knows your future. He knows everything that's going on and he is all powerful. 
um, and therefore that anything that is affecting you, he knows about and is more powerful than. Um, and I think that's the importance. You're just affirming uh, that God is all powerful, uh, knows everything, sees everything. And you're just calling on him for protection and indeed to remove anything. So let's have a look at it and listen to it now in Arabic. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la na'um lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-awm man dha al-ladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi-idhnih ya'lam ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum wa la yuhiituna bi-shay'im min ilmihi illa bima sha'a وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم. In in Arabic, um, it's directly from Al Quran, um, and what I would suggest to you, if if you're not engaged in a formal rukia, is simply to play it in the background in your house for protection. The other thing that you can do is to Play it at night as you're going to sleep or even play it as you sleep um, and that will definitely grant you additional protection. As I say, it's the most powerful of what we call doa or prayers um, and if you are having minor problems, it'll certainly, it'll certainly get rid of them. For more persistent, difficult things, it, it can be a part it can be a part of what you need to do. As I say, it's a fundamental part of, of Rukia, uh, but often I've seen Rukia not really done with love, not really done with understanding. And that is so tremendously important for them to work. Um, but anyway, have a go with it. I really do recommend it. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this. Because these are real events, I can't say how reg regularly I'm going to be adding to this subsection. Um, you know, because I don't know how often they're going to occur. But I would imagine that they'll be at least every couple of months, maybe monthly. Now, if you'd like to know when that's going to be, please subscribe and hit the button. And you'll get information on, on when new ones are released. I'd love you to make comments and ask questions. And if you do, I'll, I'll attempt to answer them. As honestly as I can. I promise you that there's no attempt on this, this channel or this part of this channel. of me. At, there'll be no attempt by me at any type of subterfuge. I'll try to be as honest and open as I possibly can be. Inevitably, there will be some of you who disagree with my interpretation. And, you know, we can agree to disagree. Um, but what you're seeing is real stuff here. What I'd love you to do, if you enjoyed this, is look at my other sections. Particularly, I've written novels about magic in Java... And they contain much more information in them, especially me trying to understand the theories of magic, the psychology of it. And I try and intersperse them with a sort of spiritual dimension. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and God bless you.